Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. You have reached Venus Unplugged, your virtual heartbreak hotel. And this is your host, Lorraine Nightheart. And what we're doing here is we're examining, exploring, uh, awakening the Snow White within, the story. You know, all, all fairy tales, uh, as in all dreams and probably all of life, are all aspects of ourselves. So when we look at a fairy tale, not the Walt Disney kind, but the kind that we thought these ancient stories of human development, uh, we come up with some really interesting things. But before I go into augury, which is the uh, ancient uh, bird oracles in, in ancient times, uh, some people could still do it. Uh, Snow White is visited by three birds. But I just, with three birds, I am going to be a bird, a messenger right now. Uh, I am humbly proud to announced that I am uh, in a book, 100 of America's Top Psychics. Thank you very much, uh, by Paulette Cooper. And last night I went to a fabulous dinner party with fabulous women, uh, and it was for uh, an organization called I Am That Girl, or Why Are You Badass? So IamThatGirl.com, go check it out. It's wonderful, uh, particularly for between the 20s and 30 years old, or actually 20 and 40s, okay, or or I am that girl within, all right? And it's a very positive movement towards uh, sharing and not giving advice to one another, but sharing what it is, particularly on our journey into mature womanhood. It is a task and a half, as they're starting to find out. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there. All right, so now we have left Snow White in a glass coffin, uh, the uh, the dwarfs, the nameless ones, remember that in truth they don't have names, are, are in great mourning, and uh, they take the coffin to a mountain and they put a name on it. And, they, and the name they put is Queen. So that gives you a hint right there. The story is not over. They cannot put her into the underworld. They believe she's dead, but she's in a state of living death. As very often, we're in a state of living death when we have no idea what's going on or we're looking at something, but it doesn't click. It's like, what? Well, what does that mean? All right. Or, uh, so she slept there, and then what happens is, uh, which is, w- once again, hints. And the reason... You know, because we're living constant fairy tales. These these are tales tales of of otherness. And we're always in multiple states of otherness. Now, birds are particularly uh, important in my life because my father was a birdie, and that's uh, like a poor man's falconry. And I, uh, uh, when I get a chance, I do falconry you know, with those birds coming at you. And it's quite extraordinary to be in their world and walk with them. And basically, you know, when you do falconry, or at least when I do falconry, you know, I'm their bitch. You know, they're, you know I'm, I'm helping them find and uh, uh, what they're looking for. So it's very interesting. But being raised with birds, of course, by the time I was seven, I had a language that no other kid on the block had, you know, and, and of course, your kids, so you just do these things naturally. My father didn't know I was clairvoyant. I mean, he knew I was odd uh, and interesting, but I could commune, actually with all animals, but particularly with the birds, and I'd have to see which one uh, had a disease, and I mean, he had this whole system separating them and mating, and, you know, so I knew about bird sexuality before the shock of human sexuality. So in this story, it's always in the details, uh, as Snow White is in her living death in her glass coffin on a mountain, can you imagine, uh, appearing to be dead? Uh, But, so while she's in this coffin, she's visited by an owl, a raven, and a dove. 
which is kind of mysterious. But if you know the ancient way, or at least suspect there is one, or realize that even in everyday life, we are constantly being given messages. The other day I was uh, working with somebody from Europe, and, and uh, as we were discussing what was going on, I knew I had helped her move into the right uh, question, not the answer, the question. And how did I know I was spot on? A cardinal, a flaming orange-red cardinal showed up at my window. Now, I live in the middle of Manhattan, but I also feed the birds, so I think they know, like, just fly by 56th Street, there'll always be a little something for you. And it was magnificent. I mean, and, and, it, and it looked, and it watched, and, it, and uh, birds communicate a lot with, the, with their eyes, okay, the way their eyes spiral around. It's almost hypnotic. And uh, there are people who have a natural infinity uh, to birds, and if you would just listen to your thought, and you may realize, like, wow, that's interesting. I would have never thought that, but suddenly this bird came and uh, gave me a message. It's about attention. Don't be concerned about being right or wrong. Just be still and take it in and listen. So here Snow White is, and what in heaven's name does this mean? Uh, okay, the, uh, the owl, the raven, and the dove. So these... And, you know, symbolically, the owl is uh, is a bird associated with the uh, the dead sun. It's uh, it's associated with death and darkness, and despair and passivity and coldness and ignorance. Sometimes, the dead sun, the sun which has set below the horizon and is crossing over the dark night of the soul, and the owl's nest. Uh, you know, the, the owl can also be, because uh, owls are, well, they're also the bird of hectate. The, uh, you know, I didn't even realize that. You know, I have to look at this. I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm not, I intuit something. Uh, so it may not be factually correct. But I'm going to look into this, that the three birds can be actually aspects of the divine feminine. You know, virgin mother crone. So we know that the owl is associated uh, with uh, Hectate, the wise old owl. And it's uh, associated with uh, the, the energy of the warrior goddesses, okay, of commerce and craft and strategy and the alluring energy of the siren. Uh, that would be that energy would be very useful to Snow White in her quest for wholeness. So even in the appearance of death, unconsciousness, asleep to, Psyche is always a work in it. You know, she's always trying to move the unconscious contents into consciousness. That's also the symbol of the mountain. Why was she put on a mountain? Psyche is always erupting and trying to, you know, and sometimes when we get into a state of uh, confusion or disassociation, Psyche is trying to break through. She's trying to give us a message. A lot of times we don't want to hear it because it disrupts our little ego world that says, oh, no, no, this person's good for me. This is wonderful. Meanwhile, they're robbing you blind. Um, but that's what the owl, the hecate, the uh, so we know something is going on around around these symbols of death. What is happening? Because she's, it, the, it's also the bird of Athene and hecate, okay, and and, and Athene or Athena uh, is the warrior goddess, okay, but she's also clear audience she she is the one for those of you that have clear audience which means that's how your psychic perception works through hearing through sound through movement right. the lear gland 
Okay, that's that's the active gland. Our psychic abilities come from different glands and in, 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 in different chakras. Okay, so there we have that. So what's going on archetypally here? And then the symbolism of the raven, that's even more mysterious and that's even darker. Uh, it foretells death and then it brings birds that, death birds that eat at the corpse. Okay, it's a scavenger with all the uh, attributes of hardness and cruelty. Okay, it represents undifferentiated darkness. So undifferentiated, you know, it's just a big lump of darkness. It's like, no, I couldn't possibly have done that. Oh, yeah, you did. But it's in the state of darkness, so you can't see it. No judgment, just there. And that's what consciousness is in. It's like, oh, Lordy, yes, I did say that. I thought that was a golden truth. And when it came out of my mouth, it was shit. It was cruel. It was hard. It had no heart. It was like a raven given a... Uh, it can the raven can it's this undifferentiated darkness and and it can be rage and sadism that fuels envy. So when we are in a envious state or feeling victimized or you know the uh, the that the raven says or the raven within you know will say oh that person has everything and and. I have nothing, and they have my everything. Well, you've just given away all your power. You're being guided by envy, which happens every day in different ways. But the difference is being conscious, just going, like, I am not listening to that. I'm claiming my own. And whatever that other person has, remember in all fairy tales, there's always this element, you know, my favorite subject matter, envy because we really need to make this conscious. It's at the root of so much wounding uh, in, in our lives and in the lives of others. So that then, uh, so she's dealing with this. So these are also telling us what, what her apparent death, but actually what she's going through inside, because each one of these birds give her a message, okay? And uh, in alchemy, uh, the raven is a symbol of the negredo. And the negredo is the darkest moment in the alchemical process. So the raven is the bird uh, that Noah first sent out from the ark to find rain and stuff. But the raven uh, when ravens show up internally or externally you know there's going to be a shift in consciousness. And then we have the dove, which is a symbol of, of uh, Venus. That's her bird. Okay. And uh, I call New York pigeons. You know, I call pigeons like, you know, New York doves. You know, a lot of people think pigeons are like flying rats or something, which I don't think so. I just think they're... Uh, they're uh, doves that uh, show their shadow because they're quite amazing. So these symbols, so then we have we have Aphrodite and we've got Sophia, which is the divine wisdom, and very often the dove represents the feminine aspect of uh, the Holy Ghost, which is the feminine aspect of the Christian mystery. And in alchemy, a dove is seen... At is contained in lead, an image that uh, when we're in a leaden state, depressed, feel like we just drank lead, within there, there, there is a dove, there is a messenger, there is a, a story that the birds have to tell, all right? And all these birds visit, and it's not, it's purposeful. So the ancient art of augury, A-U-G-U-R-Y, it's the art of receiving oracular messages from birds. And it's one of the oldest forms of divination known to us. Now we have got bird cards and we've got stories about birds. And, uh, but this is an ancient 
remembrance. Now, when we dream of birds, that's definitely a message. All right. Or you can give a bird. You know, if you see a bird, ask it. Say, would you take my prayers to, you know, Jove, or will you take my, or get my prayers from one point to another? They'll do it. They're very useful. In the morning, uh, they, uh, they wake up with uh, the balance of the sun and the moon. When one is leaving the other, it's almost like the lovers are separating, and the birds will announce this. They'll bring this in. Uh, the earth uh, breathes twice a day, sunrise and sunset, and the birds are right there. And you know, when you, you, so you hear them, tw- and they have a different tweet, okay, and chirp in the morning, and then at night, I, you know, you can hear them if you're listening, of course. And it's like they're having cocktails. It's like, oh, they're having such a fabulous time, and they're telling you the gossip. So birds are so important in our world and so important in this fairy tale, um, this teaching tale. So birds represent transcendence. They represent the soul. They can represent a spirit, a divine manifestation, spirits of the air, spirits of the dead, ascent to heaven, ability to communicate with gods or to enter into higher states of consciousness, uh, thought, imagination. So the, uh, which for those who are um, taking fairy tales or the symbolic life, okay, the, this is, I'm reading from a book here. It's called The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Traditional Symbols by J.C. Cooper. It's an excellent book to have because uh, you may, you can, you know, if you have a dream, I always refer, I mean, I can know what a symbol means in general, but then when you really go in and look at it and meditate on it and see what it's about, it's so much more profound than we could ever imagine. And so we are going to look here, 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 here. What did I do? I did have this organized. Maybe I didn't have it. Okay. So the owl. Now, this is out of this book. Uh, It's ambivalent, and it's the bird of uh, wisdom and of darkness and of death. So let's say in in Chinese, uh, it can be evil, it can be crime, it can be horror, or ungrateful children. Oh, there we go. Uh, It's on funeral urns, and it depicts death, okay? Um, In the... uh, it's night, it's death, it's... But it is the goddess Hecate. She is the one, the mysterious one. And, of course, you know, we live in a death-phobic society, so, you know, people hear death and they flip out instead of like, whoa, man, that's also mystery. That's where the, that's where the action is. It's in that... Uh, it's in this death-like sleep that Snow White is in, but she's being taught. She's in the presence of great mystery. So, and the owl, once again, is, is the uh, bird also of Athena. Okay. Now, the ravens, ooh, the ravens is a, a, it's a talking bird, and hence prophecy. So when you see a raven, or you dream of one, or you, in active imagination, all right, you conjure up a raven and communicate with it. What does it say? What does it ask? What, oh, right. All of these can be worked with. And we can slowly remember what was dismembered about this oracular. You know, things fall out of, uh, not out of fashion, it's like we forget. So on one level, the ancients were, of course, much closer to the earth and the and the signs and the symbols that was you know the earth itself was google whatever we 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 would look to the the stones and the leaves and the the birds and the animals and it was all communion now as we're growing in consciousness 
we're forgetting. But psyche never forgets. So as a talking bird and the bird of prophecy, it also t it can be ambivalent. It can be a solar or a doctor's and evil. It can be wisdom or the destruction of war. And uh, in, al in alchemy, okay, uh, with the skull in the grave, the raven is a symbol of the blackening and mortification, the negredo of the first stage of the lesser work and representing the dying to the world earth to earth so what does that mean so in the negredo the blackening is one of the stages uh that's when we go in you know and people don't usually go in unless we're in, in a dark mood a black mood a depression so if we can realize that you know depression kind of announces time to go in the answer is not in the outer world of light and consciousness. It's our journey into the depths. Now, of course, if it goes on too long, we get debilitated. But if we can relate to the depression, it's like psyche is pushing us down. And if we can realize we're not going to drown, we're going into a journey. And although it may feel that you have no idea what's going on. Psyche knows what's going on. That's where the trust goes. Now, I'm not talking about a chemical disturbance. I'm talking about, you know, the natural depressions. Sit with it. Just say, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to contain it. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to just kind of, move into it it's a it's a dark sea journey and the raven okay it's taking you into this state of negredo and that's one of the hottest hottest things in this process called individuation and this goes on your whole life so like you never get like there you get stages and then you 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 come back up and something is being pulled out some mysterious dark substance okay is being pulled out of the psyche that's the material that psyche needs to turn to gold to consciousness so in a sense you know we're all alchemists if we'll let the process happen and this is basically the work of Jung and his uh, love of alchemy he felt that that was the the language of uh, transformation and wholeness and and it is so here it hints Snow White is in a state, is a prophecy going on. And although she looks dead, it's a living death. She's still, she's contained, she's being mourned. And yet the raven comes to indicate there's still life. Because if the raven, as the bird of death, it would be stuck picking at her. Uh, but no, in this case, it's the bird of prophecy. So when we see that happen, we begin to understand, oh, wait a second. That's what this is hinting at. She's in a state of negredo. The dark state. And you can't be conscious. You can't be around anybody. And you feel like you're part of the walking dead. But you're in a negredo state and psyche knows what it's doing it's not going to destroy you and then the dove comes so the dove is the symbol it's the the life spirit it's the soul it's the passing from one state of the world to another it's the spirit of light it's chastity uh, it's innocence it's gentleness it's peace and doves are sacred to all great mothers and queens of heaven. And they depict femininity and maturity. Often two doves accompany the great goddess. So it, it, it lets you know, okay, this is going to be the cycle of life. Thou, Hecate, we know, because Hecate is behind it all. 
She's the one, uh, you know, with with Persephone and and uh, who who brokers a deal with with uh, uh, Pluto for Persephone to go into the underworld. And Demeter is devastated at the loss of her kidnapping of her daughter. But who's behind it? The grandmother, or the great mother? No, no, no. This kid's too sweet. Now we've got to separate her from the mother complex. We're gonna, we're gonna like have her go into the underworld. Because in the story with Persephone, she comes up from the underworld, not a seven-year-old like she goes in. She comes up queen of the underworld. Same thing happens here. The dwarfs, that part of us that needs to be consistent and do the same thing again and again and again, but it does kind of know when it's innocent. They call her queen. They write it on her class coffin. Such a hint. Kick's not up, man. Something's happening here. And then it also tells you that the dove, the transformational, the, the bird of Aphrodite. So she's, Snow White is moving from this dangerous, unconscious innocence, which is why she fell for, you know, the three tricks of the evil stepmother. But she had to. She had to accept that trickery, to wisen her up. Don't get upset when you fall for something. We, we all do. We have to. It's, you know, it's the divine fool in all of us. Uh, and don't get caught in that, one, in that one detail because there's always something coming up right behind it. Unless we get stuck and we keep on telling ourselves the same story again and again and again. Uh, instead of like, wow, what's happening here? What am I in the presence of? What great mystery. Because we need, you know, you actually need a healthy ego, a healthy sense of the self to tolerate mystery. It's painful for the ego. It's not painful for the soul. The soul can hang in mystery forever. But the ego is like, I want to know, I want to know. And it's like, no. You know, it, it's like uh, doing... Uh, uh, magic, it's like you have to contain it. You've got to keep your mouth shut. Or if you're doing something creative, keep your mouth shut. If you can't tell a wise person, don't tell anyone. Because if a person doesn't understand what your creative idea is or what your mystery is, they'll either say something, you know, out of a kind of a dark innocence. But what they're telling you is, I, I don't know what that means, and you're scaring me. And so I have to uh, piss on that. Sit with it. Write it out. Contain it. That's what containment is. Feeling before we open up our mouths. Not try, trying to prematurely understand. I can't believe it. Oh, I have to leave you. And I was just getting started. So, look to the birds and uh, the little tweety tweets in your life. What are they saying? Or when somebody comes along. Uh, and also the bird, of course, is Hermes, messenger of the gods. And uh, so we'll go and uh, you've got an idea about the oracle. And next week we're going to find that prince or the prince is going to find Snow White and what that really is about so go to my webpage uh, what is it oh LorraineNightheart.com telephone number 212-757-8914 uh, if you have any questions just email me and uh, let's move it on the plot thickens as they say uh, and uh, find those those three birds and do active imagination, which means just get a picture of them and imagine what that bird would be saying to you. Or what is it trying to hint at? Till next week. Bye.